Hey everybody, welcome, it's Caleb. In this lesson, I wanted to share some tips with you I've used to help me find technical jobs, ace the interviews, and organize the overall interviewing process because there's a lot to it. I'm hoping by the end of this video, you'll have a framework for starting this process and keeping it all organized. We're gonna talk about the different types of interview questions you should focus on, how to find the correct companies to apply for, and how to stand out in an overwhelmingly large crowd of applicants. I've used the tips from this video to land my current job as well as earlier jobs in my career. And this is essentially a summary of a larger career section in my software development course careers course. So if that's something of interest to you, I have a free intro course down in the description below. So the easiest way to get started with finding jobs is to subscribe to various job boards I recommend job boards for things you care about. So for example, I really like transparency of salary. So levels.fyi has a job board. So from levels.fyi, you can go to jobs, set the filter you want and see jobs that meet those requirements. I would also recommend LinkedIn jobs and blind jobs. So blind is a great way to figure out what's going on in the software development world. And you can find jobs with Pretty good transparency, which is something that I generally like. Whenever you can, subscribe for notifications from these job boards so you know immediately when a new job is posted. This is how you can find the best fitting jobs for you almost immediately. You don't have to do the work of searching for them. You're basically going to get those delivered to you. The other thing is recruiters can be your friend. So if you go through LinkedIn, you can set it up so that you're open to work. This will basically indicate on your profile that you're looking for a job. You can make this completely public or you can make it just public to recruiters. Either way, it can open up job opportunities. LinkedIn, I get a lot of people reaching out about job openings because my profile has a bunch of those keywords that they're searching for. This is actually a really great way to find your first job or get a job if you've been unemployed or looking because these recruiters will advocate for you. Basically, it's their job to find you a job, which means they're going to help you interview the best, teach you the skills you need to know, and really set you up to stand out as a candidate. So I highly recommend actually taking these recruiter reach out messages seriously. I have had pretty good success with this strategy. They'll also be able to help deliver feedback from the company to you, and they'll be brutally honest about things you need to improve. Compared to if you go to a company directly, it doesn't really matter to them if you improve or not. So you might not even end up getting that feedback or they might not spend a lot of time giving that feedback because they can just move on to the next candidate, which means you could be stuck making the same mistakes over and over again without even realizing you're making those mistakes. A simple example of this is a recruiter told me that one of the people that came to them to help them find a job had two monitors and they had their camera on the top monitor and they kept their zoom window for their digital video calls down on the first monitor. So from the interviewer perspective, they were not making any eye contact and seemed disinterested. This completely plagued them for all of their interviews and was a very easy fix once they talked to this recruiter. That's a very simple example to demonstrate a point that you might be doing something you don't notice that other people notice almost immediately. I also really advocate for networking, but this is a long-term thing. So go to events, meet people, connect with people who you do interview with, make as many connections as possible. This is kind of like the baseline for improving your chances of getting a job, but I generally don't consider this a get job quick scheme. Like this is a long-term game of building that community and growing your network. So that's how you can find jobs. Probably the easiest part because there are a lot of job openings. The hard part is actually owning the interview. How do you achieve the interview and win so you actually end up getting an offer? Well, there's a few different types of interviews, so it really depends on what stage in the interview process you are in. Most likely you'll have a screening at the beginning, which is more of like personal questions and asking about your career history. These, I really recommend you just talk with your friends and family, go through some mock interviews. And my general takeaway advice from this is to keep it positive. Whenever you are asked a question, you want to answer in a way that leaves the interviewer feeling good and not that you are a negative or toxic person to be around talking trash about previous companies. So keep it positive. So if you get asked why you left your previous company, instead of saying, oh, such a drag, I just couldn't stand that place any longer, you can say, I was looking for something more somewhere where I can be involved in a team setting and get some more real world experience. This is so much more positive and is likely to make the interviewer feel like you are a person they want to have as part of their team. Now, when it comes to technical questions, this could be a couple of different paths. One, you could do leak code, which is basically data structures and algorithms, applied programming. This is going to be the kind of whiteboard problems you might run into at interviews. Or instead, you could spend a lot of your time studying for more applied concepts, which is 
really dependent on what job you're going for. You might do a little bit of both, but ideally you can really specialize in one of these two paths, and it depends on what company you are applying for. So if you are targeting larger companies, say Google, Facebook, Amazon, all these top tier companies, well, they're going to have a general screening, not only for your personal screening, but also a technical screening. Basically, hey, can we just weed out a lot of these people by giving them general data structures and algorithms questions? These companies are much more likely to focus on those styles of interviews. If you instead focus on more niche companies, maybe smaller companies or startups, they're going to want more practical applied experience and you might not even get a data structures or algorithms exam because they really just care if you can do the actual day-to-day -day job. That has been my approach. I've actually done very little leaked code and most of my efforts have been focusing on whatever kind of job I've wanted to have. So for example, if I want to be in cryptocurrency, learning about the different consensus algorithms or learning different Web3 programming languages, these are very applied and those companies may not care as much if I can sort a list or reverse a linked list or something like that. So if you're limited on time and you can't do both of these paths, then pick what kind of path you want to go down based on what kind of company you want to apply to. I've done a few technical interviews and the first one was absolutely awful. The next one was a little bit better. The next one was a little bit better. Every single time I've taken the opportunity to get feedback from the interviewer and I apply that by studying the things I could improve on and not making the same mistakes again in the future. This made me a lot more prepared for future interviews and now I'm much more comfortable in that environment. So don't expect to get it 100% perfect the first time. Now let's talk about how you actually organize this process. How many jobs do you apply to? How do you keep track of what you've applied to? How do you keep track of where you are in the process for each company? My general approach for this is to write everything down and be focused on high quality applications instead of high quantity applications. To some degree, yes, it's a numbers game. You will need to apply to a lot of companies. You will need to not take each one too seriously because you might get some no's. But what I don't want you to do is go onto LinkedIn and find the easy apply button and just apply to every single job. That's what every other average developer is going to do. So if you want to stand out, then you need to go above and beyond for your application and your interviews. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to just start with applying to one company every day, possibly adjust your resume just a bit, you know, make it look like you really are interested in that individual job because you should be, you shouldn't apply to it if you're not. There's lots of different ways you can keep track of these job applications. I've done it with spreadsheets in the past, but would probably use a board now. So for example, I can set up these different statuses. In the no status, I could put any jobs I might be interested in. Once I apply, I would drag them to the applied. If I get an interview, I would drag it to interviewing. And then as I go through this, I can make notes for that interview process, such as the main recruiter's name, when I spoke with that person, and any other information I might need. That way, when I get asked questions in future interviews, such as who I've spoke to already or, you know, what I've learned so far, I can refer back to these notes and it seems like I know everything compared to just going with the flow and not really having any organization to the application process. If you end up getting a denied, you can check this box here and then you could filter. So for example, I could say where denied is unchecked and here are all my active job applications. I could use this for some general data analytics. So for example, if I go from applied to interviewing, but I never go from interviewing to offer, then maybe my resume and cover letter is good, but my interviewing skills need some work. And then once you are done, you can see how many jobs you applied to, how many you interviewed with, and then how many offers you received. You can also then, you know, sort it different ways to see when you applied to things or, you know, get a list of the same information. This is just an example template, but you could do it however you wish. I'll leave a link to this down in the description as well. The last thing I wanted to mention is don't negotiate unless you have leverage to do so. If you are fresh in your career, you have no other job offers, and you're really not that skilled, then you have zero leverage. But if you're highly skilled, you already have a job, and you have competing offers, you have leverage and then can ask for higher pay. Don't ask for higher pay if you're the one who desperately needs the job, which you don't wanna come across as desperate, but by negotiating when you have nothing backing that request, there's a good chance you'll come across as greedy or desperate for more money, and that you're not actually genuinely interested in the role, and there's a chance they might actually go back on their offer. So I was able to successfully negotiate a company up 40K, but that's because I already had a job. I had no real rush to find a new job 
and I had the skills they needed. So in that situation, negotiating made sense. So just make sure you're smart about it. That's an overview of my experience so far, but I'm sure there are a lot more tips. So if you have any of your own, drop them down in the comment section below. Really appreciate you checking out this video. If you are job searching, I highly encourage you keep track of it using a board like I showed you and commit to applying to say one job a day. And I guarantee you over time, you're going to make progress. If you do end up landing a job, let me know. I really want to see your success. And these are stories that I want to share with others. So feel free to leave a comment if you successfully got a job. And if you did, what are the steps you took to get there? Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe if you want more videos on this kind of stuff, as well as software development tutorials. I look forward to seeing you in the upcoming lessons. Peace out.